morning and happy Easter. Thank you so much for tuning in. Calvary family, I want to let you know I miss you. This is not the way I envision Easter this year, but I hope that you're able to gather your family around. I hope that you're able to open up your Bible and try to tune everything else out and just try to take some time to listen in. Also, like and share our post so it's spread for other people to watch as well. Thank you for all those that are watching that are guests that have not been to Calvary. We want to welcome you to listen in as well. And if you live in the Elk City area, we want to invite you to come someday to one of our services. We'd love for you to come be a part whenever we are actually able to meet. Easter Sunday is here, and I cannot believe it. It seems like the year is flying by right now, and I, I love this time of year. And if you know here at Calvary, it's usually just a big day. And, and, and I, I always like to talk about the resurrection, read the story and everything like that, because it's so powerful. And this morning, I want to still do that, but I want to answer the question that I feel like that we tried to answer last week. We saw last week all the story that was about the crucifixion, but we asked the question, why did he die? And this week, I want to do the exact same thing as it, re, as it revolves around the resurrection. We see the story, but why does it mean anything to us? Why, why does it change things? The resurrection changes a lot. We want to answer that question of why does it? So this morning, look at John chapter number 20 and 1 Peter chapter number 1. John chapter 20 and 1 Peter chapter 1. We'll start in John. And as you're looking there at John, we, we see that story that is unfolding where Mary and the ladies have gone to the tomb. And, and Luke, it says this, that they go there, they look at the sepulcher and he's not there. They're much perplexed and they're confused by what's happening. And so whenever they walk out, there's the two angels and he says, they say these words. He says, why? Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen like he said. They go and they tell the disciples. And so whenever Mary shows up and he tells the disciples, it says that what basically happens is verse number two, as she runs and comes to Simon Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved and saith unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and they came to the sepulcher and they ran both together. And the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went to the sepulcher and seeth the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. And went in, uh, then went in also the other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. You see, that first Easter was, was an event that we celebrate, but they were confused by at the very beginning. The ladies were perplexed. Uh, you look at Peter, and he was overwhelmed by the things that he saw, the things that he heard. And, and so they went to their own home. They're kind of like we are right now. They're in their own homes. And it says in verse number 19, it says that they, the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. They're also fearful. They have to be sad. They just lost one of their best friends and their leader. And, and now they're, they've got all these mixed emotions. And, and now it says that Jesus stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And then from that moment on, he, he's giving them something to, to shoot for, a purpose in life. He tells them, I'm here. I'm alive. I want you to know that what I said from the beginning about how that I'm going to lay my life down. No man takes it away from me, but I can also take it up. It's true. And I'm proving that to you right now. And this moment transforms the entire life of the disciples, especially Peter. Peter goes on and preaches on the day of Pentecost. He carries out exactly the mission that Jesus lays out for him. And he is the one that is writing the book of First Peter. And just like Peter's life is changed by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, your life and my life is also changed by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we want to look at why. 
And, and so this morning, as we look now at First Peter, the same man who wrote First Peter was there and actually felt hopeless at one time. But now is experiencing, has experienced the hope that God gives in the resurrection. And that's what we want to talk about this morning, is God gives us hope, a lively hope, by the resurrection of Jesus. In 1 Peter, he's writing to a group of people who are being persecuted, some being even going to their death. And yet there was something different about them. And people were wondering, why is it you can face all the trials of life and even certain death with a different kind of spirit? And Peter writes to them in 1 Peter chapter 3, be ready to give an answer for the hope that lies within you. Now you and I, if we're saved, we're supposed to have this hope in which he speaks about. Now hope that we think of today is maybe a hope that like, I hope something happens, like something silly, like I hope that the Dallas Cowboys win a Super Bowl. I hope is something like that. However, we don't have a certain outcome. But biblical hope in this context is a confidence that we have. Not hope that we have an expectation that we hope that it happens like it may happen. Hope here in this context is we have confidence it will happen. And so he's saying, you need to give an answer for the confidence you have in Jesus Christ. And here's some things that I think that you and I have to answer. Why do we have confidence or hope in the resurrection today? And I, I look at 1 Peter, and there's no doubt in my mind that it begins to unfold here right before us. Look at verse number 3. Blessed be the Lord God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. Which hath according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Notice this first point. The hope that we're given an answer for is first, number one, we have hope in salvation. We have hope in salvation. Look what he says here. He has begotten us again. Do you remember that in John chapter number three, Nicodemus shows up and says, I need to know about you. How can I have eternal life? And so Jesus answers and says unto him, you must be born again. Man, that really confused Nicodemus. And so Jesus had explained further. He says, listen, you have to have a physical birth, but you need to have a spiritual birth where you are saved from your sins, where, where you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior. That second birth is what you need. And here is that's what he's talking about. And notice this, he's saying this, is that God has shown us abundant mercy by giving us salvation. Abundant mercy. Mercy is that, that, that idea of he's given us something way above and beyond what we deserve. I, I remember a time where I, I, I have a, a time in my life where I used to be a football player and I maybe was a little bit better shape than I, I was then and I was well, now I guess it would be a better way of saying it but um, we used to do these fundraisers we'd sell these cars that give all the discounts on the back and I remember I, I took one to a an individual and I, I was going to sell it to him and they wrote me out a check it was, I think you sold for $15 they wrote me out a check for a hundred dollars for that one car and I said, well, do you want more cars? He said, no, 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 no. Just take it. Give it to your, your football team. We love you guys. You guys use it however you need to. We were raising money for New Jerseys. And so what happened is that he gave way above and beyond what it was actually worth. And, and sometimes what happens is we, maybe you, like me, have paid something above and beyond what it was worth. And you actually, at the end, you, you felt like you had buyer's remorse. Like what you bought at that price, it was not worth it. Jesus paid way too high a price for you and I, but he had no buyer's remorse. <laughs> he loves us that much. I cannot help but think I wasn't worth the price of, of Jesus. I wasn't worth the price of him dying on the cross for my sins. I wasn't worth that. But he gave it to us with an exceedingly, above and beyond, abundant mercy that you and I did not deserve. 
my hope that I have that changes my life and why I celebrate the resurrection is I have hope that today I am saved. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians that there were some people who were saying that there is no resurrection of the dead. And Paul would say this, listen, if you say there's no resurrection of the dead, my preaching is vain. My, my, my actual faith then is vain. He would go on to say this, that if my hope, there's no hope in the resurrection, we are of most men miserable and we are yet in our sins. But the Bible does not say that. The Bible says that because Jesus Christ did die on the cross and he did rise from the dead, that we are not in our sins. So, so Paul begins to transition that statement. He says, we are yet in our sins, but Christ is alive. He did raise from the dead. He is alive today, which means that we have hope in Jesus Christ. We have no more sin debt. We do have our sins taken care of, all because Jesus Christ is alive today. My salvation was purchased by the blood of Jesus, but it was secured and made whole by the resurrection of Jesus Christ to prove, yes, he is alive today. Listen, my friends, we are not in our sins. We have hope and we are not miserable. We can celebrate today because Jesus is alive. What a wonderful, wonderful truth. My hope, my hope is in my salvation. I have salvation that is so freely offered, freely, abundantly, above and beyond what I was worth with no buyer's remorse. I have hope in salvation. You know, the thing that I look at now is that now that I know that I'm saved, and, and maybe you are one of those people who say, you know what, I don't know if I'm saved. I want you to know that Jesus paid that price for your sin, that you could have eternal life. He, he, he bought you before you even knew you needed salvation. He's offering it for you today. But it's your choice. You can choose to accept his free gift and put your faith and trust in him, and repent of your ways, or you can leave it behind. My plea to you is to please choose Christ today. Maybe this morning you're that person that is saved. The benefits that we have from salvation blow your mind. You have hope because you're saved, but you have confidence and hope also in your future. Your future is secure. You know, this time of year, it reminds me of how thankful I am for the resurrection. Because maybe like me, you've lost some people that you've loved. I lost a mom who was real with cancer. I was four. I don't remember much about it. I just know the stories that I've heard that she, she suffered through that. And uh, I lost a brother who was born with a defect and, and he died at birth. And I just, I think about others that I've seen that have passed away and, and people that I love and care about, people, members of our church. And I think for some of us who who know people in our church and, and LaVon who passed away this last year, one of our most recent deaths, and I think of others like Eldon. And you know, here, here's the thing is that I, I think about with all those people is in those moments, they were all believers. They were hurting. They were suffering. The promise they held on to, though, was this, is that it will not last. My hope is in the future that I will receive something better. Look, we have a hope in salvation, but we have a future hope as well. Notice what it says here, verse number four. Because of the resurrection of Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. He is saying this, that there is coming a day all those who have passed away and they hurt and they suffered. And there was a day that when my mom was hurting, that moment she closed her eyes in death, she opened her eyes. And in that moment, she had a body that was incorruptible, undefiled, and it fades not away. And it was reserved for her in heaven. And the day that she closed her eyes in death, she woke up with that new body. And there also this, that the Bible says that she was kept by the power of God. In those moments, 
understand this. It's God that keeps us through this time. God has given us a future hope. The fact is this, is that you and I will live a life on this earth, but there is coming a day. The Bible says that we will close our eyes in death. And after that, we will meet God. But if we know Christ is our Savior, our hope for our future is this, is that we will live with Him eternally with all those who have gone on before us and that we will be in heaven with Him and our bodies will be different. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, how can you not go back to this chapter and look at some of these verses? The Bible says that in verse number 49 of chapter 15, and as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in the moment of the twinkling of an eye, the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed for this corruptible must be put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when the corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Our future is secured and our hope is in this, is that I will spend eternity with Christ. Why do I celebrate the resurrection of Christ from the dead? It's because, because he, listen, he defeated sin and death at the same time. And because he conquered death, he gives us life. That is an amazing thought. He came, and, and, and as the Bible would later go on to say, that the Adam brought sin into this world, but Jesus brought repentance and forgiveness and salvation. Adam brought death into this world, but Jesus brings life. You and I have a future hope in heaven if we know Jesus Christ is our Savior. That hope that we have is for all those who have gone on before us. They, the moment they die, boom. Perfection. Maybe today you've had loved ones that have gone on. Know this. If they are saved, they're not hurting anymore. If they're saved, they've received the inheritance that was promised to them by the resurrection of Jesus. And then you and I, we have that same promise. I, we're able to face this life a little differently. I, I, I don't want to die today. But I'm not fearful of death. Because I know that Jesus purchased my salvation at way too high a cost. But it's given me what it says in 1 Peter, that I have a home in heaven, an inheritance. And understand this, I don't keep it. I don't hold on to it. We are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. My hope and my future is secure because of the resurrection of Jesus. See, I have hope in salvation. I have hope in my future. But what about right now? I have hope for my present as well. Because of the resurrection, I have hope in the present day as well. Notice what he goes on to say. He's talking to a people that are going through some very difficult times. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, need be, you're in the heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perish, though it be tried with fire, might be found into the praise and the honor and glory of the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, and whom not that now you see him not yet, you haven't seen him yet, but you believe. Rejoice in joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. He says, I know you're going through some difficult times right now in this life, but you are facing it with such a, a good spirit. You, it says here that you have you have rejoiced with joy unspeakable and full of glory. 
How is it that in this life that, that they're living, that they're having such struggles that they're able to approach and say, I have joy and I rejoice and, and I have great glory in God and I'm able to have such a fullness of life? Why is it that you can look back and, and Paul would say later in 1 Corinthians after he talks about the victory we have in Jesus, he says this, Hey, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain of the Lord. He says, because of the resurrection, keep serving God. Because of the resurrection, Peter says, you have hope in your future, but you have hope in the present that though you go through difficult times and though life can be hard, you can still smile and say, I can rejoice. I can face these hard times with a confident hope. He says, you haven't seen Jesus, but you love him. You haven't seen him, but you believe him and you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. How do we do that? Why? Why is this happening? And I go back to the, the old song, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. You know what he's done? He has given you and I purpose. Purpose. A confident hope for today that I have purpose. Regardless what comes our way, I am here and God loves me, and he's given me direction, he's given me hope, he's given me purpose in my life. Knowing my future in heaven helps me today in my present to live with a complete and full joy. Why do I tell us that we have hope in our future and in our present? Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You have hope that today it might not be easy. I look around at things that are going on. We have jobs that are lost, economies that are shutting down. We have we have the, the sicknesses going around. Uh, people around us are getting sick. We have a lot of things like that are going on. We have maybe some hardships that are being faced. People finding out that they have cancer. Or we have people that are going through uh, struggles in their life right now with their families. And, and there's there's a lot of hardships that we face as individuals. You know the struggles that I'm going through with with our, our foster care, and, and you know that I know some of the struggles that you're going through with. We just had a, a member of our church who's had a, a, a small electrical house fire, but it's gonna it's, it's just a, such a pain right now with everything going on. And and listen, all of us go through some really difficult times. Why is it that we can face today with joy unspeakable and full of glory? And it's only because of this. Because Christ rose from the dead, I know that this life is here for just a little while, and then I get to experience eternal life with my Savior because I have confidence in Jesus and what he did for me. I can rejoice because this is not the end. This is just the beginning. I have confidence in my, my present right now that no matter what circumstance comes my way, because I do have a future for sure, that is secure in Christ and the resurrection, I can face today with joy. It's not always easy. It's not easy to go through the things that some of you have gone through. But listen how the resurrection changes it all. It should change our perspective. It should change the way we think about it. God has changed us because of the resurrection of Jesus. We have hope in salvation. We have hope in our future. And we have hope for our present day right now. All because he's alive. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because I, he lives, all fear is gone. That is why we do, do Peter is writing these things. Why? Why do you have hope today? Why? Why is it you can give an answer about the hope that's within you? What is that hope? I'm saved. I, I'm on my way to heaven. My Jesus paid way too much of a high of price for me. He had no buyer's remorse. I have a hope in my future that, that those that died that I loved and went on, they have a new body, incorruptible. They, they are wonderfully just able to live a perfect life right now. And I, that is my future for sure. That is what I have coming as well. I also think about how that right now, you and I say, hey, what, what, what's going on right now? How did I live this out right now? I can have confidence that Jesus knows 
where I'm at. He knows the pain that I'm going through. He knows the struggles that I face. He's been there. And because of his resurrection power, he holds on to us through our difficulties and he gives us hope for the day. He gives us he gives us the ability to, to go on one more day, one more day. And here's what he says also there. He says, you can believe. You haven't seen Jesus, but yet you love him. You haven't seen him, but you believe him. And I want to challenge us that today, the way to continue to have more hope in Christ because of his resurrection is that ask yourself, am I loving him the way I could or should? Am I believing him to trust him for everything in my life? Even though things are not going well, do I trust him? Do I believe all things about him? Because if I love him like I should and I believe him like I should, I will have joy unspeakable and full of glory. My Savior lives. And because he lives, I can face today and I can face tomorrow. And I can live this life with confidence. Not because I am anything, but because of the power of Jesus. This morning, let's celebrate. With your family, celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. You have hope because you have salvation. You have hope in your future. You have hope in your present. Church family, we have hope as a church that God is going to continue to use you in a way that you cannot even imagine. To stay fast into the, the ministry that God's called us to do. And I want to speak to you today is again, is if you don't know Christ as your Savior, today's a great day to come to know Him. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, and thou shalt be saved. Believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead. Confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved. Listen, if you do not know Christ as your Savior, today you can know Him. First, you have to admit that you know that you're a sinner. You have to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ that he is who he says he is and he's done what he says he's done and repent of your sins. And the Bible says ye shall be saved. Today's a great day to know Jesus Christ is your Savior. If we're saved, let's celebrate. The why he rose from the dead is to give us salvation, to give us confidence in our future, and to give us confidence in the present. Peter writes about it because he lived it on that day. As he went and he saw that empty tomb, it changed his life drastically. And that hope that he had is the hope we have today. Let's live out the hope we find in that empty grave. Thank you and God bless you. Hope you have a great Easter. Enjoy your time with family. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer and we will close our service today. Lord, thank you for the day that you've given to us. God, thank you so much for the resurrection of our Savior. God, we want to thank you the fact that you purchased us at way too high of a price and that you have sealed us with your Holy Spirit, that, God, you've given us a home and glory and that, God, that you've given us an ability to live this life on this earth because you live. God, I, we don't deserve what you've given us, but we are so thankful for what you have given us. So God bless now this day. Help us to remember, recall the hope that we have in you. And God, I ask that you'd help us rejoice in the days that we have right now. And Lord, give you all the glory for everything you do for us. Thank you, God, for just the fact that you loved us so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you and God bless you. Have a great Easter.